What's going on viewers? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys all about trading futures. I've been trading futures for more than three years. Can you guys believe that? You can go and look at the history of my channel and you can see exactly when I started trading futures using the Jigsaw trading platform. And since then, I've progressed quite a lot. I've traded a few different markets and in this video, I wanna give you guys all of the things that I've learned in my progression. Obviously, I may not be able to include everything, but if you have a question about anything in regards to trading futures, about something that I may not have covered in the video, please write it down below and I also include encourage anybody who has, you know, a good amount of knowledge and experience in trading futures to also answer people's questions in the comments below, guys, really don't be shy. We're all here to learn and get better. That's the environment that I try to, you know, promote out there. Most people on YouTube are in the beginner level of trading. So I actually wrote a little poll and most of you guys have less than three years of trading experience. That means that I have more experience than you. That's why you should listen to your elders, my friend, and respect your elders. You should have a lot of respect for people that have have more experience than you in any industry. That doesn't mean that because you have less experience than me that you're better or worse, that I'm better or worse than you. That doesn't, I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is that you should value experience, people that have stories to tell, people that have experience and things to share about trading futures. In my time trading futures, I've had the pleasure, mostly thanks to this YouTube channel, to be able to interact with a lot of different traders and talk with a lot of different traders. I get emails from all kinds of different types of traders, even guys that have been trading on the floor like in the 1970s. I have one friend that I helped use Sierra Chart that uh, used to be a floor trader on the Amex and the Nicey way back and now is interested in trading futures like the S&P 500 and all that because it's kind of fascinating. You know what I'm saying? I already did another poll here on Telegram and less people answered, but 51 1% have been trading for three years or less. It seems that on Telegram, more of you have more experience. That tells me that people that use Telegram are smarter. Haha, <laughs> just joking. Let's get on with it right now. We're going to talk about trading futures, my friends. Futures are great markets to trade. I like futures. They're very nice products. They have their ups and downs. I'm going to try and cover different ups and downs. So golden tidbit number one coming right up for you right now. If you trade commodities like crude oil, natural gas, gold, and maybe a couple other things, futures are probably your best bet. And there's a few different reasons for that. One of them is because they trade 23 hours a day, my my friends they're only closed for one hour a day that means that if you want to hold overnight you're pretty secure with that the only thing is obviously you have to maintain the exchange margins if you plan on holding a trade overnight um, which means it's the full margin sometimes your broker will offer you a lower intraday margin that's called the day trade margin when I started getting into trading in 2018 2019 I was exploring different products and I remember they had for natural gas, there was UNG, which is an ETF. And I used to trade that. I used to trade the options on that. And um, obviously any of you guys who trade options, you know the story with options is that they never really truly reflect the same price action that is going on in the underlying futures contract or in the actual spot market of that particular commodity. There's always going to be some sort of difference, some sort of whipsaw, and it's affected by other variables like volatility and time decay. So the options or even the ETFs are not typically going to represent to you the most accurate way of trading the price action of that commodity. That's gonna be best done through a futures contract. So if you wanna trade crude oil, the best way to trade it is crude oil futures, my friends. At least that's what I fully believe today, especially with the new micro contract symbol MCL that was released not too long ago. And this is um, another addition to the micro product suite, um, which are very good products if you are taking longer term position trades or wanting to control portfolio risk in your account and getting that direct exposure to the market, not having to deal with things like time decay or any of that ETF rebalancing, uh, humble jumbo voodoo that goes on with these ETFs. And you guys know what I mean. What I'm talking about there is if you look at a chart for the uh, crude oil ETF, which I think was USO, compare the USO market to a crude oil continuous contract chart, or if you can chart the actual spot price of crude oil, you'll find that that ETF is not always accurately, most of the time it's not accurately representing the long-term price changes of crude oil. And the reason for that is kind of beyond the scope of this video, but there's this ETF rebalancing that goes on there that affects how that ETF is priced. So if you truly want accurate exposure to crude oil or commodities, 
you're looking at the futures markets. Guys, if you want to support this content, it's very simple. Click on the first link down below that checks out interactivebrokers.com. And if you need remote assistance help with trading software like TWS or Sierra Chart, you can send me an email at support at verillotrading.com and we'll see if I can fit you into the schedule. Golden tidbit about to drop with you guys. Are you ready for it? Okay, this one is really important. Not related necessarily only to futures, but this one is going to open up your mind, especially if you're relatively new to trading with less than three years of experience. In order to really get a feel for markets and trading in the long run, I think it's very important to stay in the game for many years, my friends, to the point where you see your peers, people that you used to trade with, some of those people are gone. They quit. And you've seen new people come into the game. And what this means is that you've witnessed a number of different market cycles. You've seen how the market changes over time where people come in, they end up quitting. You see some people that stay, but most people end up stopping after some point. If you've stayed in the game to that extent, it means that you, my friend, have some experience under your belt and you should be proud of that. You should use that experience to your advantage. You guys already know what futures are. They're basically these contracts that are settled at a future date. And at the time of the expiry date of that contract, you have to either provide delivery of that contract or receive delivery of that contract. And normally futures are intended for commodities, you know, for people that deal with large quantities of commodities where they want to fix a price for their inventory to protect themselves against some natural disasters or certain things that are out of their control. And that's kind of where futures really shine, which is in regards to portfolio risk control. And that's why they're so widely traded around the world. So you'll find that there's a lot of volume going through in these contracts. Now you might think, well, where's all this volume coming from? Who are all these people trading these contracts? And that's really what's so interesting about this is that there's thousands, probably millions, well, let's not go that far, of people that are doing business in these futures contracts for different reasons. Some people are speculating on the price right now. They think it's going to go up in the next five seconds. Other people are speculating on it more on a daily time frame, on a 15 minute time frame or on a weekly time frame. And then you have other types of investors that are putting on positions in these futures contracts simply to reduce or increase their market exposure to that specific market. What traders will do to control their risk is they can go directly into the futures market and let's say they're long a bunch of tech stocks, they can go in and short the NASDAQ futures, which means that when the market goes down, the investor will profit from the futures position and the profit made from that futures position will offset the losses that have occurred in your stock portfolio of tech stocks. This is one of the main things that makes futures very nice products to trade because they give you that direct exposure to the value of that market. So because futures are so widely traded and they trade all around the clock and there's lots of volume going through, there's lots of different approaches that are applied to trading these markets, lots of different types of strategies. And uh, I guess this is what can make them hard for a beginner to trade at first because you don't really know what's going to work. You don't really know what to trade, what's working for you. It definitely takes time to build that up. You know, you're not just going to show up for the first six months of trading a market and you know exactly how to trade in different market environments, you know, through different market seasonal cycles because it changes. You know, you might be hot in your trading for a couple months or a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden everything changes and you're giving everything back and you don't know why. The answer to that is just because the markets change around a lot. The volatility changes, the participants, they change the way they're interacting with the market. The sentiment of the market changes depending on different things, depending on supply demand, depending on news, macroeconomic things. Um, another golden tidbit for you right here. When it comes to trading futures, it is very important to keep an eye on the economic calendar, which means events that are planned in the economic calendar, basically data releases. Uh, one that I like to use is forexfactory.com slash calendar. I think that's the link. Um, but most brokers also have this. If you use interactive brokers, they have an economic calendar built into their platform. This calendar is very important because there are institutional investors that look at this data and they trade on this data. They may have to adjust their portfolio and their risk exposure in their accounts based on new data that comes out from these economic reports. Now, you and me, 
or probably not as sophisticated as them. But the general point to understand is that there are people that trade upon these pieces of economic data. Some of these people have lots and lots of contracts to buy or sell. So it's kind of important to pay attention to what's going on. Some of these reports would be non-farm payrolls, CPI, when the central bank announces stuff with interest rates, um, and then regarding specific commodity contracts, we're talking about inventory reports, like the crude oil or natural gas inventory reports, okay? So as I'm kind of giving you guys some of this knowledge here and some of this info, I hope you're internalizing some of it. And if you do enjoy this video, let me know with a comment down below. Please do not be shy to write your comments. When it comes to futures, there's really only a few contracts that are tradable. And I guess this ties into one of the downsides of futures, which is that there's not really a lot of different markets that you can trade. You're not just gonna find some remote futures contract and start trading that and expecting to take good trades on it. While it might be possible, it's very unlikely. When it comes to trading futures, there's a few key contracts that you need to learn about. Um, the first one is the biggest and most liquid futures contract, uh, most traded, the most volume goes through on this contract, and that is the ES contract, which represents the S&P 500 index. And, um, you know, if you've traded futures for any time at all, this is probably the contract that you've seen first. This is the one you probably started off with. Some people trade this one exclusively. I think it's important as a trader, as you develop and gain more experience, you're going to sort of find where you feel more comfortable and you develop your edge and you determine that certain markets fit your style a bit better than others. ES is a great market, but it never really grew on me enough to become like one of my primary traded markets. Um, but it's a very important market to watch. So when it comes to trading the ES, a golden tidbit about to drop right here. One thing that's very important that I see a lot of traders focusing on, and I think this is very important, it's called correlations. The correlation between the S&P 500 index and its other neighboring indexes like the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000. And you can also add in the Dow 30 in there, although that one's sort of like the oddball. So maybe you don't want to pay attention to it. Some traders don't look at it, but some traders do. I don't know. You have your three major stock indexes and they all share a correlation to the overall stock market. So when it comes to trading futures, if you're trading the ES or you're trading the NASDAQ or you're trading the Russell 2000, it's important to watch the correlation to the other indexes. So I'll give you an example. No matter which indicators or methods you might use in your trading, what I would do is I would do your analysis on all three indexes separately and use the levels from your analysis um, that can tip you off to certain things happening in the neighboring indexes. Maybe that's a little vague. Let's go deeper. I'm going to open up this uh, daily chart over here. Okay, so I use supply and demand zones. And the way I draw supply and demand zones is kind of a specific way. If you want to learn how I draw them, you can look at the previous video where I went over a crude oil trade review, a seasonal trade review. For example, you have these levels here. I categorize these as daily demand zones here and daily supply zones right here. These levels, I would draw them on the ES index or whichever index I'm trading. And then I would go ahead and also draw them on the correlated index. So I would go over to the NASDAQ chart and I would also draw the same type of thing. Basically, I'm doing my analysis based on my methodology and my way of doing things. I'm doing them on the neighboring markets as well. I'm doing them on the correlated markets. And the reason why I think this is important is because if you've watched the markets for any time at all, you'll find that sometimes these levels in the correlated markets can have an impact on their neighboring index. Comment below if that ever happened to you, if you've ever seen that happen, but I certainly have seen it happen. And I do think that if you have a solid enough methodology and you, you kind of know what you're doing a little bit, I think that the analysis in a correlated market can have an impact on the market you're trading and vice versa. So correlations are very important. Now let's go on to different types of markets. That applies to the stock indexes. Let's look at a commodity market like crude oil or natural gas. Let's look at natural gas because I made a little chart book for that the other day. Some of you guys are looking at this and you say, well, look at all these charts. I mean, these are all sort of kind of interesting and all that, but I don't understand what's going on. And that's perfectly normal. Like I said, respect your elders, my friend. I've been trading for quite a long time and I've developed certain ways of looking at the markets. And it's not rocket science. It just requires you to take the time to learn about certain things. Like on the right side of the screen, here you got a footprint chart. Over here, you got a 15 minute chart. Over here, you got your daily charts. And I combine all these in my trading. Just as a quick example, let's go back in time. You know, go and watch some videos of me trading back in 2020. I was far less solidified in my trading than I am today. 
And um, when I look at the market today, it's like I look at it from a different lens. I have a much cleaner, clearer lens into what I am looking for and looking at compared to three years ago when I first started. I had other things I was looking for and I kind of wasn't so solidified as to why exactly I was using those methods. I was kind of just using them because I saw other people using them and I was just copying what they were doing. But over time, I sort of developed upon that and made certain realizations based on what the market told me, because I think at the end of the day, the market should be your best teacher. You know, you can take lots of information from different traders. The market should be the one telling you the absolute truth about what is going on. Um, so whatever works for you works for you. Okay. I'm just saying that there's a big difference between how I used to look at the markets three years ago compared to how I look at them now. And this probably is going to be the same for you. So really guys, don't rush it. Take your time. Okay. So let's go on natural gas golden tidbit about to drop my friends. So when it comes to looking at commodity contracts, something interesting that I think about commodity contracts is that because there's multiple different contracts uh, for every month of the year, there is a futures contract. I think it's important to watch more than one contract. Why do I think that? Well, a lot of people that trade commodities and we're talking about institutions, we're talking about traders all around the world doing different types of strategies. Some traders do these things called calendar spreads where they buy the front month, sell the back month. And if you pay attention, the only reason I'm telling you guys this is because I've seen it. I looked at the market and the market told me this information and I'm conveying it to you in this video. I did not ask chat GPT to tell me what to say in this video. Okay. So as you can see here on this natural gas chart book, I've got the front month as well as the back month and I'm charting both of them. And the reason why I'm doing that is because number one, there's sometimes volume going through on both the front month and the back month at the same time. So if I'm looking at the market intraday and I'm scouting for a certain setup, let's say I'm looking at a certain level and all that. And we're kind of close to rollover period. Rollover period is this period where volume is being transacted on multiple futures contracts for the same commodity or same underlying market. And that's where things can get a little wonky. But when it comes to crude oil or natural gas or some of these other commodities, that's where if you start looking at the front and the back month at the same time, you can start to get an idea of the volume going through on both contracts because there is considerable volume going through on both contracts. How I would apply this would be like, let's say I'm looking for a particular trade and I'm trading on the front month, which is over here on the left side. But then I see on the back month, oh, now there's a big offer that came in right away that changes the context. And the reason it changes the context is because it is new information that has been given to me by the market. And if I was not watching that back month contract, I would not see that big offer that came in. And that big offer could just be the thing that helps to move the market in my favor or negate my trade completely and, you know, make me get the hell out of it. So there's context that occurs in both markets. And I think especially when you're trading certain commodity contracts like that, it's important to watch multiple contracts at the same time to give yourself more context. You guys understand where I'm coming from. The other thing is in regards to levels. Some of you guys know about this. It's called psychological price levels or psych prices, however you want to call them. Um, even numbers, quarters, halves, uh, magic numbers like 3, 69, 420, Elon Musk, whatever. Um, you guys get the idea. These are like magic numbers. Elon Musk is not a number, sorry. And um, Sometimes if you look at the front and back month of a futures contract, um, because the prices are different, you have to account for that same level in two different places. So for example, here on NatGas, uh, we have uh, 2.97 as well as 2.99, those two uh, daily supply zones right there. And if I go ahead and look at the back month contract, you can see that the levels are there, but they're different prices. You have 2.875 and 2.91 even. Um, so sometimes it could happen that the levels are different prices and sometimes the levels could be the same price. I'm going to go over to crude to demonstrate this particular example. So, so an example of this would be on the front month. You can see here's a weekly level 8236. The current market price is 8304. That was the closing price on this commodity here, crude oil. For example, this 8236 over here on this back month contract, you can see that um, we're pretty close to it. We had a pretty big rally the other day and it's almost on the verge of being reclaimed. Um, whereas if you go to the front month contract, you can see that uh, the front month is trading at a bit of a premium and we're not as close to reclaiming that area. 
the example that I gave there, I would only do that on bigger picture levels. I think that the intraday levels are a little different. Okay, so you guys get the idea, all right? Let's do a little recap of some of the major pros and cons of trading futures and the futures markets in general. So I don't know if this is a con or a pro, but it's both actually. The thing about futures that you need to understand is that they are extremely highly leveraged products, meaning that you can make a lot of money or lose a lot of money, risk a lot of money trading these futures contracts. And that's why it's very important before you go into trading these contracts, you need to understand the kind of risk that you are undertaking when you trade these things. Um, and that's why now they have these products called micro products. And I think that the micros are very good products. Uh, it's a very good stepping stone for traders. I traded them and I still trade them pretty much exclusively. I trade them on crude oil because they're nice for position trading. Um, you can trade the NASDAQ micros, the S&P 500 micros, Micros, the Russell 2000 micros, gold micros as well. Uh, and they're just good ways to control your portfolio exposure, you know. And instead of trading, you know, like the big ones, for example, in the ES, you're trading 50 times the value of the index, which is, you know, that's quite a lot of risk for the average, you know, small account trader. I mean, not everybody has a hundred thousand, fifty thousand dollar account to be trading a portfolio that they're managing. If you're managing a smaller account or even trying to grow a small account, these big contracts are just absolutely too big. That's why they came out with those micros and the micros are nice products, guys. So check out the micros. I think they're good products for risk control, either if you're controlling the risk in your portfolio or even day trading, just be careful with over trading when it comes to the micros because the tick value to commission ratio for the micros is uh, is quite a lot different than it is for the minis, the bigger contracts. Um, it's higher, meaning you're paying more fees. So if you start over trading a bit on those micros, the fees are going to start adding up. Um, so I think that they're pretty good for position trading. If you're taking longer picture trades, you're all right with those micros. They're pretty, they're really good actually because you can, you know, you can scale out, you can add more. With the micros, you can put on feelers, and that helps you to control, you know, your physical and emotional reactions to trading. Um, you know, put on feelers, you can add to trades, you can take profits in different zones, you can do a lot more flexible things. Whereas if you're trading the big contracts like the NQ, RTY, or the ESs, or big CL, or big GC, or big bonds, the risk in those contracts is a lot higher, and you need a lot more bankroll to justify taking the risk in those contracts. So one big pro about futures in the USA and in Europe, being the Eurex exchange, is that they're regulated by the government. Um, meaning that the clearing firms and brokers, they have to undergo a lot more regulation compared to other parts of the trading industry. For example, Forex is decentralized, crypto is decentralized, futures is more regulated, meaning that everything that goes through in the futures market is all looked at, it's all calculated. Uh, there are certain rules regarding certain types of trading, like you can't do uh, spoofing in the market, you can't do wash trading, that's completely illegal. Wash trading would be like... Um, you know, putting a bid for a thousand contracts in one account and putting an offer in the other account for the same amount. Uh, things like that happen in crypto quite often. Uh, and you'll see it happen. It's interesting. Uh, but, you know, that kind of stuff is illegal on the CME and probably on the Eurex too. Futures in the USA are more regulated and it is far less likely for clearing firms to go under um, compared to other industries where, you know, they might not be as well capitalized. They don't have higher capital requirements. And, uh, you know, there's just kind of more shenanigans that go on. They could be laundering money. You don't know what these exchanges are doing. That being said, I'm a bit of a crypto boy myself, but you know, that's my problem, right? Now, it probably could still happen that futures brokers, clearing firms lose money. Um, but the thing is that most of them have auto liquidation functionality enabled, meaning that if they have a customer that, uh, you know, they're going a bit too heavy in their trades and um, their account is getting close to losing, you know, 80% of the value of it, uh, they have auto liquidation functionality. Now, by the way, you shouldn't allow your, your account to go, you know, 80% down in, in one trade. Although it could happen. You could have some kind of a black swan event like crude oil going negative. A couple of years ago that happened. Um, and there were brokers that took a losses on that. Anything is possible, but it's just important to understand that it's much less likely for clearing firms to go under um, unless there's some kind of crazy black swan events. In that case, just, you know, be aware of it and uh, don't put all your money in a futures trading account. That's what I can say to you guys. Another good thing about futures is that a lot of brokers will let you open accounts from different places in the world. Uh, for example, I'm in Canada and I have no problem opening futures accounts with different U.S. brokers. My broker's Ironbeam, and they open accounts for different uh, provinces here in Canada. I'm in Quebec. Uh, I don't know about other provinces, okay? 
Now, futures are also nice for retirement accounts and taxes um, in the USA, that is. Um, I do think that futures have better tax treatment than other uh, forms of investments, although you should consult your tax specialist regarding this. I'm not going to give tax advice uh, regarding this, but I do know that in some retirement accounts in the USA, like the IRA, does allow you to have futures um, which is good because if you have a long-term investment portfolio in a retirement account and you want to hedge it using futures, which is one of the best products that you can use to hedge the risk, you know, it's good to know that you can do that in a retirement account too. Another good thing about futures is because there's so many different market participants that trade these things for so many different reasons, unless you're BlackRock or some of these insanely huge institutions, these markets in general cannot be manipulated by two or three or four traders. Whereas if you're looking at some other markets like crypto or small cap stocks, you know, you can probably manipulate the market yourself if you're crafty enough. I think it is uh, more of a Wild West type of scenario because of less liquidity on the order book. If you're trading a small cap stock and you have, you know, an offer of 10,000 and then for the next five prices, there's nothing and then whatever, you know, it's a different game compared to futures where you have liquidity at every single price point. You guys understand where I'm coming from? Futures are a different game, all right? Like I said earlier, futures, there's not a lot of available markets, which means that there's not going to be a constant flow of trading opportunities all year round, every week, every day. And some of you are going to say, well, how is it possible that these guys on the internet show these big trades all the time and it seems that they're making money every week, every month, whatever? I don't know, guys. They could be cherry picking their account. You don't know what they're doing. They could be crafting these things. They could be engineering those PL reports. You don't know. Or they could be telling the truth. But one thing that I know for a fact from my years of experience in trading these futures is that the markets change and there's seasons in these markets. If you study these markets, you'll find that there's periods where they're hot and there's periods where they're slow. These things change. So that means that there's going to be periods in the year, probably a lot of the time, where it's going to be it's not really going to be very opportunistic. And there's going to be other periods where all of a sudden you just made your whole year in a couple of weeks or in a couple of trades. And that can happen. And uh, go watch my other video that I uploaded last week to um, give you guys more of concept into why I think that's the case and why I think that's perfectly normal. And you should learn how to psychologically accept that type of activity. So yeah, opportunities can be seasonal with many periods of slow and chop. Another really nice thing about futures is that there's good quality data feeds and they're not expensive. So I always go back to Sierra Chart because obviously they're my favorite platform. But Sierra Chart has very good data feeds for futures compared to other markets like stocks, for example. Um, to get all the data on stocks can cost you some money every month. You know, and you cost, it could cost you upwards of 100 bucks to 200 bucks a month, depending on your platform provider, to get all the level two data. Uh, and, you know, if you want some kind of a tick by tick data feed, you know, go and get something like IQ feed, which is supposed to be a highly regarded, good quality tick by tick data feed. You know, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars a month. Whereas with futures, you know, the data, if you're a non-professional subscriber, costs you $30 a month, something like that, US. And, uh, you know, you can get the tick by tick data, 100% accurate bid volume and ask volume. You can have the footprints to be totally accurate. Um, and you can have historical data going back as far as you want. Um, and it's all accurate and it's all done very well. I think that Sierra Chart does their historical data extremely well. They're one of the best out there. Now, this video has been full and packed of different information about trading futures, guys. If I have not answered your particular question or have not covered your particular idea that you may have wanted to hear about, please write it in the comments below. Do not hesitate to write a comment. I will answer all the comments personally at some point, okay? And if you guys are watching this and you're enjoying this, or maybe you disagree or agree with what I'm saying, also write a comment, guys. Please do not be shy. I love interacting with other traders on the internet. I find that traders are a very interesting type of people. They tend to think outside the box, looking for new ways to solve problems. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, let me know down below. If you're looking for a futures broker, check out Ironbeam. And that's what I got to say, guys. If you want to watch a video of me reviewing a crude oil seasonal trade review, check it out right here. I reviewed it last week. And if you want to watch a video of me explaining how I think the modern trading industry works, check out this video right here. I also think that one's pretty interesting, kind of make you think a bit outside the box. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.